title of the lesson today is forbearance. If you will, please turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, begins with these words. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. In verse four, he said, do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering? It is the goodness, forbearance, and long suffering of God that leads you to repentance. In verse one, we note how that not only did the Gentiles sin, verses 18 to 32 of chapter 1, but also the Jews sin too. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 29. Those who would judge another while practicing the same things judge themselves. In verse 2, we note how that it was true that the righteous judgment of God was against the Gentiles who practiced sin. Yet we also know that the judgment of God is against those who those Jews, too, who practice such things. So it was not just the, the Gentiles, but the Jews, too. And those who judged the Gentiles for practicing sin, verse 3, by doing the same things themselves, would not escape the judgment of God. And finally, in verse 4, we see that the goodness of God should lead people to repentance. People are called by God to repent. In Acts 17, 30 to 31, God commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is a command of God for all people. Repentance is not merely feeling sorrow or regret. Repentance is a change of heart, a change of heart or mind that leads to a change of conduct or behavior. In 2 Corinthians 7, verse 10, Paul told the Corinthians that godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. And so repentance is not simply sorrow. Repentance is a change of heart that leads to a change of life. Here in 2 Corinthians 7.10, godly sorrow produces repentance to salvation. Today, we will look at the topic of forbearance. What does it mean? What does it mean for God? What does it mean for us today? We begin the first part of the lesson today by looking at divine forbearance, the forbearance of God. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, we see that one of the qualities of God is the characteristic of forbearance. The Greek term translated here as forbearance may be defined as the act of holding back, according to Thayer. To hold oneself back from, especially with an effort. We see the English term forbearance defined by an English dictionary, to hold oneself back, especially with an effort. Sometimes it does take effort to exercise forbearance. Just because one can do something does not mean that one should do something. Just because one has the ability or power to act does not mean that one necessarily should act. And so forbearance or the act of holding back. Paul wrote of God's righteous judgment in Romans 2, 1 to 4. Certainly only God is qualified to judge, to judge the souls of people. We see how that he rebuked the hypocritical judging and the practice of unrighteousness in Romans 2. How that Paul taught the abundance of God's goodness and forbearance and long suffering. How that God's goodness is meant to lead you to repentance, which leads to salvation, life. The fact that God is forbearing is not a sign that God approves of sin, but that God desires for us all to repent 
of sin. And likewise, the same is true of the people today. Showing forbearance is not a sign necessarily that one approves of sin or condones the practice of sin. The apostle Peter wrote in 2 Peter 3 and 9 of the Lord, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Long-suffering or patient. God is patient toward us. It's not a matter of God being slack, as some may say, that God has delayed his coming, delayed his promise of coming, coming in judgment. The Lord is not slack. The Lord is long-suffering, and so God is patient toward us, wanting for everyone to repent of their sins. We also see the forbearance of Christ. Jesus certainly had an abundance of goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering. Think of the miracles that Jesus performed for the purpose of confirming that he was the Christ, that he is the Christ, the Messiah of God. Even the disciples at times had little faith or small faith. Jesus spoke to his disciples in forbearance. In Matthew 17, 17, he said, how long shall I bear with you? Bear with or hold back. Practice forbearance. Be forbearing with you. How long shall I bear with you? Jesus taught his disciples to have a forgiving disposition or attitude and always be ready to forgive, to let things go. In Matthew chapter 18, 21 to 22, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Jesus is not saying that one need only forgive 70 times seven either. Why did Peter say seven times or up to seven times? Was he being generous? Did he think he was being generous? If someone comes to me, my brother comes to me, he, my brother sins against me, how often shall I forgive him? One, up to seven times? Jesus said not just seven times, but up to seven times seven. And again, the purpose is not to literally state that one forgive only seven, even 70 times seven, but that the times be limited by only the, the times that one is willing to forgive. One, is, one forgives another. If he sins against me, I forgive him. Have this kind of attitude, this kind of forgiving disposition. Certainly, we would not want God to put us at a limit even of seven or even 70 times seven either. How many of us would have already exceeded that limit? And so we notice the divine forbearance, but also we see the need for human forbearance. We see particularly the forbearance of Christians. As Christ is forbearing, so Christians should be forbearing too. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, 1 to 3, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Paul looked at himself as a prisoner of the Lord. Not the Lord held him prisoner, but that he was in prison or in chains for the cause of the Lord. He preached the gospel of the Lord, and he was not ashamed. Just as we saw in Romans chapter 1, he beseeched the brethren to walk worthy of the calling. In verse 2, he said, with lowliness. And so the idea of, of meekness, gentleness, long-suffering, patience, bearing with and so practicing forbearance, bearing with, holding back, wrath, bearing with one another in love. One of the characteristics of love is that love bears. 
with. Here it says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. If one will have these qualities in his life, certainly this will go a long way in keeping the peace and maintaining unity. Paul also wrote to the church of Colossae in chapter 313, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. It's not simply a matter of bearing with or holding back, practicing forbearance, holding back, back our anger towards someone or wrath, but letting it go, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, what do we do? He said, as Christ forgave you, you must also do. As I said, one of the qualities of love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Love never fails. And so love bears all things. Love is forbearing, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. Peter wrote in 1 Peter 4, 8 to 9, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sin. Who wrote this? The apostle Peter, the same one who asked Jesus how many times he should forgive his brother if his brother sins against him, up to seven times. Here we see, Love will cover a multitude of sins. How many times is a multitude? Many. Love will cover many sins. You think of the multitudes that followed Jesus, for instance. At times, there were thousands of people who followed him. Love will cover a multitude of sins. It's not just up to seven times or even up to 70 times seven, literally, but that, that number represents completeness that we continue to forgive and we continue on to forgive. Peter may have had the proverb of Solomon in mind when he wrote this passage, Proverbs 10 and 12, love will cover a multitude of, sin, of sins or love covers all sins. So how many is a multitude? All. All the times that your brother sinned against you, forgive him. That's what we're called to do. Peter matured. He learned the lesson of Christ. What do we learn from the lesson today? Paul urged and implored his fellow Christians to follow Christ in unity. Today, we consider the words, as we see in Ephesians 4 and 2, bearing with one another in love. Again, one of the characteristics of love, according to 1 Corinthians 13, is that love bears all things. And here we see bearing with one another in love. Practice forbearance. This is a characteristic of God. This is a characteristic that, that Christ showed during his ministry. We're taught in the epistle as written by Paul that they were to walk or to conduct themselves or live in a manner, in a way worthy of the calling by which they were called. They were to live with Lowliness, gentleness, and long-suffering. Lowliness or humility. Jesus was said to be meek and lowly. Live with lowliness or humility. Live with gentleness or meekness. It's not weakness to be meek. The idea of gentleness is Christ was gentle. And long-suffering or patience. God himself is said by Peter to be long-suffering. Patiently bearing with one another in love or forbearing one another, holding back in love. Show mercy, show compassion. And not only that, but show forgiveness. Let it go. Let go of the grudges to lead to bitterness and follow Christ in love. Forgive one another. Practice forbearance. Certainly this is needed today. The question that remains for you is, what will you do with the goodness for parents and the long-suffering of God? According to Paul, these are said to lead us to salvation, the salvation of the Lord. Are you exercising goodness for parents and long-suffering in your life as Christians? We hope that you are. If you're not, if you have fallen away in sin, repent of your sin and go to God in prayer. If you're not yet a Christian, then consider becoming a Christian today. Believe and obey the gospel of Christ. You've heard the gospel. 
the good news of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. You believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Confess your faith. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, as the Ethiopian did in Acts 8. And they baptized. Why? Remember, it was Jesus who said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. The previous verse, verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel, the good news, while lost in sin, through the sacrifice of Christ, we can be redeemed. In Romans chapter 10, Paul's heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel was that they be, be saved. He quoted a passage saying that all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then he says, but not all have obeyed the gospel. And so if you are a Christian but have fallen away, repent of your sins and turn to him in prayer. If you are not a Christian, then believe and obey the gospel today. We hope the lesson has been helpful to you. And we invite you to come back next time, Lord willing, and we'll continue our study. It was good to be here today.